My next guest takes on Kelly D'Angelo at RFA 44 coming up here on September 30th. Emily Whitmire joins me here on the program. Emily, how are you? I'm doing good. How are you doing? Doing very well. Appreciate you asking. And uh, right off the bat, how does a nice person like yourself get involved in combat sports? Um, actually, that's kind of a crazy story itself. Um, I was invited to a show one night in southern Washington in Vancouver um, at a bar. And I didn't know what MMA was, never really seen fights before. And I went and I was 18, so I wasn't even old enough to get in, but I had an ID and I got in no problems. And the announcer actually asked if anybody wanted to grapple Lisa Ellis, um, Lisa Ward at the time, and my hand shot up in the air. And uh, I was the only girl that raised my hand, so I got in the cage and I actually ended up wrestling her. We were both drunk and she almost broke my arm and then the ref was like stopped it and then let us go again and then she almost choked me out um but apparently i looked kind of tough in the mix of this and a guy came up to me afterwards and was like where do you train at i was like i don't train he's like oh come to my gym and then it was just kind of a snowball effect after that i just started training and here i am seven years later in vegas (laughs) interesting so if i'm hearing you correctly your first brush with with fighting was actually you were intoxicated and you were fighting lisa lisa ward lisa ellis at the time Basically. <laughs> okay, that's cool. I, I saw also that you were a, a tough enough champion. How much uh, going through that organization has really helped your career? Because it, it's one of those organizations that's really uh, sort of boosted uh, a lot of fighters in their careers. Oh, you know, it was a, it was huge. I've always wanted to fight for them. And uh, I actually lost like three amateur fights in a row. And I kind of thought I would never get the opportunity to because to me, Tough Enough was always painted as like the premier amateur martial arts. And it was such a big deal to fight for them. And I actually, when I moved here, I ended up getting a fight for them anyways. And uh, I won that fight uh, out of my weight class. And so then they ended up offering me a title fight and against a girl that was 5-0. and oh, So I was definitely the underdog going into that. But I ended up winning the first round so just moving here everything just kind of came together really well and you know tough enough definitely has helped so much jeff uh picked up the pieces where his brother left off and just ran with it and he's done such an amazing job good stuff and uh, i know one of your uh, really close friends is actually amisha tate how did you guys meet and how long have you guys guys have been friends um, I've actually known her since, uh, I lived in Washington. Uh, me and one of my training partners, Glenna, we, uh, got invited to go up and train with her one day and, uh, I met her then. She was super amazing. Went out to dinner, took us around like such a sweetheart. And then she ended up running into her again in Oregon sometime later and we hung out again. And then this was, you know, a couple years later and she was like, Hey, what are you doing? Message me on Facebook. And I was like, Oh, you know, just living in Oregon, working a serving job, kind of training, you know, nothing really going on. And she's like, move to Vegas. And I was like, okay, well, uh, let me, you know, get some things together. And uh, four months later, I actually moved in with uh, her and Brian, uh, totally opened their home to me and my dog. And, you know, it was amazing. So basically, the whole reason I'm here is because of Misha. Interesting. Now, are you a Seattle uh, Seahawks fan like Misha is as well? You know, I've worked in sports bars, and uh, it's just hard to pay attention. I'm always working and stuff. I'm around it, but I'm not a big fan. I would love to see teams where I'm from, you know, do well. The Ducks, Beavers, Seahawks, Blazers. Of course, I want the Northwest teams to kick ass, but uh, I'm not like a diehard football fan by any means. Gotcha. At least you admit it. Like, I know some people will, like, try and, like, come off as, like, oh, yeah, I'm a big fan, and then they can't, like, name anybody on the team. So I like your honesty in this interview. I appreciate it. (laughs) Yeah. I know Russell Wilson's the quarterback, and that's about it. (laughs) Yeah, that's good. That's good. Um, Now, uh, how did this uh, deal with RFA come together? Uh I actually basically was begging and bugging them quite a bit. Uh, I was kind of under a little bit of a dry spell. Like, I took six fights and I got no return on the other end and it was just kind of getting frustrating and uh actually Rona that works for Tough Enough this is them helping me again uh tagged me in a post uh Sheena Starr I believe uh made a post about looking for a 115 pound girl Rona tagged me in it I messaged her immediately and was like I want the fight I don't care who it is please give me the fight and uh ended up being a couple weeks later of going back and forth and they ended up finally giving it to me so I'm just so excited to finally fight for them a bunch of my teammates fight for them and so I know they treat them super well and you know it's a really well-known big organization to fight for 
Yeah, and, and you sort of referenced it a bit there. Uh, you haven't fought uh, since last year. Um, has it just been difficulty getting difficult getting fights, or, or what's sort of been uh, the reason you haven't fought since uh, since two thousand fifteen? Yeah, I just I kept uh, like they, someone called down a coach or a promoter would call down the gym like, hey, do you have any girls with this weight? Yes, we'll take the fight. They'll call back. Oh no, they don't want the fight. Or uh, looking for talking to other promoters. Oh, hey, we got this fight. Uh, We'll take our we'll take it then the girl ends up taking like another opponent instead of me and so then it was just kind of like a little bit of a dry spell I don't know if I got kind of deemed Misha Tate's training partner or whatever and you know everyone just kind of want to know trains at extreme couture I'm just kind of uncharted water that nobody wanted to swim in you know so finally I got a return and I'm hoping this works out Let's talk about that. You're taking on Kelly D'Angelo. How do you think you match up against her? Uh, well, I mean, I don't, I can't say I know like too terribly much about her. I know she was five and zero as an amateur, and uh, she's a boxer. Um, I started out doing MMA. I didn't start out boxing or wrestling or anything, so I don't really have a fallback. So from the beginning, I've always blended everything really well. Um, my last fight with uh, Emily Duco was mostly a stand-up fight, uh, so I'm not afraid to stand and bang. But obviously, if you google and watch my tapes online i do like to go to the ground quite a bit too you know so just kind of whatever like falls into place you know you go into a fight with one mindset of oh i'm going to do this but things change and you might end up having to stand or going to the ground might be the best idea now d'angelo is going to be the big hometown favorite in this fight does that sort of add more motivation to this fight knowing that you're going into enemy territory and you can spoil the party in this fight that, that's exactly what I like thrive for. I love, love being the underdog, actually. And I love going into somebody's hometown. And uh, I don't really like being in my hometown, to say the tr to be truthful, you know. Um, so definitely going out of town is like what I like. I like going into that uncomfortable feeling for some reason. Interesting. Now, uh, we've talked about Misha Tate helping you get ready for this fight. Who are some of the other people helping you get ready for this matchup? Uh, Heather Joe Clark, she's been a huge one. Um, we have an amazing amateur team that I still train with. All of our guys fight at like 115, 125, 135. So I have a ton of guys my size. You know, Trent Phillips, he's been there with me since the beginning. Uh, he actually only has one amateur fight, but he's the one of the toughest guys in the gym, in my opinion. Um, then there's Bob. Uh, uh, Corey, he's another one of our amateur guys. So just a bunch of the amateur guys have been helping me. Heather Joe Clark, Misha, of course. So I got, you know, top level pro females to go with. And then, you know, some of the toughest amateur guys to go with. And as far as the cut to straw weight, has that process uh, started already or will that happen closer to fight time? Um, you know, I actually, you know, cause I had such a layoff, uh, I was walking so light already just cause I really hadn't had, hadn't cut weight for a while. And so I wasn't really like over when you're cutting weight a lot and you can finally eat, you know, you end up kind of getting a little heavier than you want to just cause you're like, well, I better eat this before I can't eat again, you know? So I was already walking at like 128, 127. So I've just been kind of maintaining and now I'm waking up like 122, 123 in there. So I'm just basically kind of right where I want to be before I start my cut. So nothing too crazy. Probably next week I'll start tapering off a little bit more and hopefully just cut from like 121 or 122. Now, you're not looking past your opponent here, I'm sure, but uh, are, you, are you looking to fight again this year? Or are you sort of uh, aiming for 2017 is when you'll uh, fight next? No, I definitely, definitely, since I did have that layoff, I want to get one more in before the end of the year. You know, I'm hoping uh, RFA will maybe want to bring me back uh, either out there or I know they have shows in Colorado. So my teammate Boston Salmon always fights up there. So I'd love to get a show on a card up there, you know. So I'm hoping I would love to get another one with RFA. My last question for you here, the big news that came out a couple of weeks ago was that Misha saved that uh, poor girl who, uh, who broke her arm, but you were actually on that hike with Misha, if I'm not mistaken. What was that whole experience like getting to go through that and, and all the positive feedback that Misha got from doing that? You know, Misha definitely has a heart of gold and we were like halfway up and someone had said, you know, uh, oh, a girl broke her arm up there or something. And I was like, there's no way we're not helping or doing something in my head I didn't even say that out loud I just knew right away I had that feeling and you know we were up there and then when we started back down the mom was actually like trying to tie the girl to her body and it was just 
like beyond unbelievable to me because there was these guys that were actually helping her. This guy had to have been like six, five, 250 pounds. And he's, this mom is, you know, a normal little soccer mom, like not in super great shape or anything, you know, and she was struggling. And, uh, Misha actually ended up asking, uh, the little girl, she's like, Oh, do you want me to help carry you? And the girl didn't even hesitate. And she was like, yes, please. And I think she could just feel that energy from her mom being really worried about carrying her two miles down a mountain. And Misha of course just comes off as a strong woman in general. And so, uh, Misha just loaded her up and carried her down and her and the little girl were talking all the way down. Um, I went out in front of them a little bit actually. And I kind of started throwing some rocks off the path that were, you know, Misha could have, you know, maybe tripped over or anything, but you know, it was incredible. She, that little girl, she, she was really quite upset. And so I think Misha definitely helped calm her down quite a bit. You know, that's not the first time Misha saved a life. <laughs> so I'm sure it won't be her last. Great. Well, we're certainly looking forward to your fight. RFA 44 live on Access TV coming up here on September 30th. Emily, thank you so much for the time. Uh, where can people get a hold of you on social media? And if you got any thank yous or shout outs, the floor is yours. Um, I would like to definitely thank Extreme Couture, my coach Dennis Davis, my other coach Robert Fallis, M Misha, of course, for having me down here, Heather Joe Clark. Um, my Instagram is definitely my main source of social media. It's Emily Whitmire, 150, or E M Whitmire, W H I T M I R E, 115. And then my Twitter is Whitmire MMA. Oh, sponsors, definitely. Uh, Susie Johnson, she's a real estate. Oh, hello, Bruce. She's a real estate agent up in Oregon. She definitely uh, helped me out quite a bit for this fight and then fixed me up. He's a repairman I wait on at a bar I work at, actually. And so he helped me out quite a bit. So if anybody needs anything fixed in Las Vegas, hit up Fix Me Up.